Today on Jaren Jeff Eat New West, we are checking out Alejandro's latest New West restaurant. Yeah, it's like a mud patch thing. So out of nowhere, I get a message from Alejandro just being like, hey, can we grab a coffee? I go to El Santo. We sit outside. He, he doesn't give me a coffee. I, I, did, I, I didn't end up drinking a coffee. He says, I'm bringing amaranthus back. Amaranthus, if, if people don't know, is the plant-based restaurant he had down at the Key that closed yeah. during COVID. And I'm like, oh, people are going to be really excited. He goes, oh, oh no, uh, maybe I misspoke. <laughs> I'm opening a new restaurant where Amaranthus was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's gonna be a butcher shop. We're gonna have some food offerings as well. And the idea is to offer local meat and organic meat and the best meat that we can um, and bring people the best experience. The Amaranthus <laughs> people are not going to be excited about this whatsoever. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm the chef at El Santo and the chef and one of the owners of Butcher's Table in the River Market. Alejandro, um, uh, I own El Santo, and we're just starting our new venue on uh, November 12th, which is stable. For us, Amaranthus is always about showcasing and highlighting the produce and, and the ingredients, and so the mission statement hasn't changed. For now, the idea is to write like the right products for people to take them home. We want to have something where you can come for a great, great beef standard on Friday. But you know, also if you want to come for your Tuesday chicken or a Wednesday ground beef. Yeah, and, and I think at the same time we're in a unique position where where we're close enough to everyone as well that that coming in for a steak doesn't have to be a full night out, but still be top quality, delicious, able to, to I probably shouldn't say have it with liquor because you know where I am. But... We're working on our liquor license, so we had a liquor license before, we're just making sure that we can bring it back. And it would be very cool to have a butcher shop with like a liquor license. Yeah, just sit and drink whiskey and have a steak. So something pretty cool happened. Alejandro invited you and I and a couple other people from the group to come and taste some of the samples. They're still deciding on a few of the different farmers they're going to use. And we got invited to do a little taste test. And, and keeping true to what Alejandro's been doing right, right from the get-go is just healthy, like local, top, top quality food. Even just the, the attention to where this beef is coming from. Like we had the opportunity to, tr to try those those steaks. Yeah, um, I would never have thought you could tell the difference from from farm to farm. I thought, you know, a steak is a steak and it was amazing that like actually, they were prepared very simple, right? Just like salt and pepper um, and grilled. But yeah, it was amazing that like these three that we were sampling uniquely are all taste a little bit different. Yeah, how, I mean, it's not very often that you get the opportunity to try different cuts of meat back to back. I, I, I've never done it. Like, it's not like Same. you don't have wine. It was almost like a wine tasting. Yeah, except with the meat coma. But, but for, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that was, a, that was a really cool experience to have. Um, yeah, yeah, the same cut, but from three animals, three farms. I just to taste the variations. It was also kind of cool. Like, our little excited about the power of the Eat New West group. Without telling us, they ran a poll before they decided to open this restaurant in the group. Uh, the really? third business partner is Sam's dad. Okay. Um, and he ran the poll, so nobody even knew who he was. It was kind of like a ninja. S stealthy ninja. Yeah. Ninja. And move. he said, "What's the one type of restaurant in New West that we're missing?" Yeah. And by a landslide, steakhouse. Really. And I think they were kind of already had it in the back of their mind, but they used it as a way to confirm. Which I don't know. That kind of felt cool to me <laughs> that, yeah. that you know people are taking the the group seriously. Yeah. Perfect way to cook a steak. <laughs> um, there's two ways for me. I, I, for a very long time, was a fan of like Chicago blue, like butter, high heat, searing it, and done. Um, but but a good like med rare on a on a grill is is can't really be beat often either. I'm vegetarian. <laughs> I think that we're excited, but also we're really scared because I think that COVID changed uh, the world for everyone. But I also think that the positive thing about COVID is that now people are cooking more at home. And I really think that now we can provide with like uh, some tools 
or like some some stuff for people to go and have a good meal and just enjoy it with their family. The, the back end is, is chef led. So so you, me who have worked in the industry for a while, um, and other cooks who are kind of leading the program. So any when you come and you buy your meat and you want advice, we have a plethora of advice to give. Or or we're looking at maybe doing curated chef boxes where we send you home with everything to make a meal at home. Um, but it's it's all curated by one of us. It lets us still be a part of people's meals, which which for me is the whole reason they get into this, is, is to be able to provide people with that experience. And so even the cooking at home to have a hand in it is really exciting for me. What did you think of the Philly cheesesteak? It was really good. Had you ever had a cheesesteak? See, every cheesesteak I've ever had has the melted cheese in yeah. it. But Sam was explaining that I guess in Philly, there's kind of two camps mm -hmm. of what a traditional cheesesteak is. Mm -hmm. And one camp is kind of that melted cheese like we get out here. Yeah, like a provolone or something. And, and the other camp, though, is like homemade cheese whiz. Mm -hmm. And that's what they made. And when, when they first said cheese whiz, I'm not going to lie, I was not interested. Yeah. I thought, oh, gross. But it was really tasty. It was really good. I, yeah. I would order it for sure. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you when I had cheese whiz last. Probably when I was a, a kid or something. Uh, my, that was nothing like like yeah. It's in the concept was there, but um, yeah, totally different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, we're really excited about bringing the venue back to life. And although we're really sad about the uh, Amarantos going uh, to heaven for now, uh, we want people to come in, grab their meat, but also know that they're coming for lunch. Know that they're gonna get their Philly cheesesteak or their hamburger or their steak and frites or whatever it may be, and and, and know that both of those things come together for them. I'm getting hungry. Okay. Where do you want to go next week? I'm kind of leaning towards Columbia. Yeah? Grandma, yeah. Grandma sandwiches? Grandma sandwiches. I, first of all, I would love their cookies. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they're such a nice part of the community. It would be really nice to, For sure. to showcase them. Uh, and it's like, yeah, soup, soup weather, too. Yeah. So, good time. Awesome. Okay. That's where we're going next week. Unless you guys have better ideas, uh, let us know.